Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going everybody? It's Aaron Hilliard for Mushroom Wonderland back with another foraging video in the spring here in the Pacific Northwest. If you're interested in foraging mushrooms or wild food or survival, uh, this is a good channel for you. Hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and leave a good comment. And so on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland, once again, we're taking a walk into the somewhat coniferous forest here of Pacific Northwest. These are the kind of forests that I have learned to forage in and that I love to forage in. Although there's not gonna be as many mushrooms now in the spring as there typically are in the fall. So let's just get that straight right out of the gate. Fall is really the biggest mushroom season for desirable edibles here in the Pacific Northwest. This time of year, you can find morels, which are a really desirable edible, as well as oyster mushrooms. We're gonna go on a look in the forest and see what we could eat in a survival situation, or if you just like foraging and finding what mushrooms are going on in the woods, come with me on this trip on Mushroom Wonderland and let's go see what we can find growing in the beautiful forest of the Pacific Northwest. Thanks for joining. All right, so here's an interesting spring mushroom in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, this one might look a little bit familiar to you because it has these white speckles all over the top of the cap. and. Uh, that's what the Amanita muscaria looks like. And this is a relative of that, although this is not Amanita muscaria or the emoji mushroom or the one popularized by Mario Brothers. But uh, this mushroom is known as a panther cap. So in the Eastern part of the United States, they would call this Amanita panther, pantherina. And here in the Pacific Northwest, we call it Amanita pantheranoides. And so some of the distinguishing features is that it's gonna have this brown cap, but it has these white spots all over it. And these white spots are actually remnants of this part down here. This is called the vulva. And it's kind of like a little egg that the mushroom bursts out of. And that's one thing that's unique with uh, Amanitas. And so this starts out like a little egg or the, uh, the vulva and then as the, the mushroom bursts out of it, chunks of this little material here are left stuck on the top of the cap. So it's all the same material. This isn't some special uh, poison or something on top of the cap, but we've always been told that these are poisonous ever since we were a kid. And for good reason, they are poisonous. Uh, every field guide you'll ever read would classify these as toxic. And uh, they are a mycorrhizal mushroom, which means that they grow with the conifer trees here in the Pacific Northwest. They can associate with a lot of different trees. Um, an indicator of Amanitas, it's always got these white gills underneath here. It's, uh, it's also got a ring. This is called the partial veil. And it protects these gills until the spores can mature enough. And then this part will fall away. You see how delicate that is. That means this thing is producing just millions of spores in those gills. And with every tap, just millions of them are going out into the air and they're, we're just surrounded with them all the time. So this mushroom has already let off millions and millions of spores into the air. Every gust of wind, there's more going by and I'm actually helping it right now to spread its spores, but uh, these ones aren't considered deadly, but definitely a good one to avoid. Although they're pretty to look at and it's okay to pick them and it's okay to touch them. The Amanita pantheranoides. A uh, beautiful Amanita mushroom that's fruits here in the spring in the Pacific Northwest. And we're going to leave these behind, but, uh, but always a cool one to look at. So let's keep walking. So this is an interesting mushroom to find and a good edible one that grows wild here in the Pacific Northwest. This one is known as Pleurotus ostriatus, also known as the oyster mushroom. It's popular all over the world. Uh, you can find it in gourmet grocery stores and markets. Uh, this mushroom comes in a lot of different strains, but the, uh, but the genus and species is, uh, is Pleurotus ostriatus here in the Pacific Northwest. 
and uh, they grow like this, uh, like little shelves on deciduous logs, always on a dead log, uh, growing here on a uh, red alder in this case. Uh, nine times out of ten here in Washington, they're growing on red alder. You can also find them on big leaf maple once in a while. It's got these white gills and they kind of run all the way down to the very short little stipe, if you want to even call it that. They're really kind of fleshy and a little bit waxy feeling on the cap. And uh, these ones are pretty fresh, but they do have a tendency to get a lot of uh, flies attracted to them right away. They get worm uh, worms in them and larvae and stuff. So Pleurotus ostriatus or the oyster mushroom. It's a beautiful one. It's easy to identify. There really isn't a lot of uh, look-alikes that are dangerous out here. But uh, just look for those gills that run all the way down here to the stipe. Uh, they're attached right to the wood and they are uh, pretty fan shaped. So um, yeah, when you pick these, hurry up and get them right in the pan because they, uh, they don't last very long and they don't travel very well. But uh, oyster mushroom, a great one to find in the woods here in the spring in the Pacific Northwest. Here's a couple mushrooms growing here. And we have looked at these in a past video, but we're talking about it again because I see so many of these popping up around here this time of year. So it's got a really fragile stem. This mushroom, you might see it when you're walking around in the forest um, this time of year because they just seem to be everywhere. They're kind of growing singularly, but there can often be so many of them that they look like they're grouped. But if you look underneath the bottom on these gills, you can see kind of a faint pink color. It's kind of a pink buff color. And uh, this one definitely has it. I can see it, I don't know if you can, but. Um, and then if you look, these gills are not attached to the stem. So um, there's different types of gill attachment. There's like decurrent, meaning they're running down the stem or the stipe. And then there's um, notched, which is like an enoki mushroom or a flamulina, but we don't, we don't have one to look at right now. But uh, then there's attached and then unattached. So if you look, the gills do not touch that stem there. So that's an indicator on a lot of mushrooms in a way that you can uh, reference them against keys in an identification guide. But this one's got almost a metallic look on top and it's this kind of tan, um, sort of yellowish color, but it's definitely got that metallic shiny look. It's got those pink gills and the super fragile stipe that just like, it just flakes away like straw or something you see. So this is uh, this is in the uh, genus Entoloma, probably subgenus uh, Nolenia. And I'm not sure exactly which species this is. A lot of them need microscopy to determine the exact species, but they come from a genus of mushrooms that are known to be uh, have some toxic ones there in their family and they're just not that well studied because they are, for lack of a better term, an LBM out here in the spring. And uh, if you were to cook this up, it would just disintegrate to pretty much nothing. But um, Nolenia or the, uh, or the genus Entoloma, you could probably narrow it down if you did enough research. I'm not going to do that today, but, uh, but just giving you an idea what this is if you see it growing out here. So yeah, it's a beautiful mushroom. One of the few pink spored mushrooms, like the Entoloma and the Pluteus have, uh, have pink spores, but um, somewhat a rare trait in a mushroom and a good identifier. So there you go. We're gonna throw that back to the woods and keep moving. So right down here, I've spotted a little mushroom growing in the grass. And as I pull this out, I can see that it's not like the Amanita. It's not like the other mushrooms that have gills. This one's actually got a 
spongy, uh, spongy surface underneath the bottom of it. Let me get a little closer so you can see. But um, bolites look like this, but this one is actually not in um, in the family of bolites, although it is. Well, I guess technically it's in the family of Boles TCA. This one is known as a Suillus. And so it's got this really fine spongy surface under here that's yellow. And it's got this crazy uh, like stalk. It doesn't smell very much like anything, but it's got this fur on top. And uh, you know, it's got this really kind of velvety feel. So if it were dry, it would be a lot fuzzier. Um, and, the, and the stem is not centered in this cap. It's very irregular but an interesting pattern underneath. And so, Sue Willis, these uh, are usually non-toxic, although not very desirable. The Sue Willis luteus um, is uh, often eaten. It's called the Slippery Jack. This one's a relative of that, and this one is called uh, Sue Willis lackii, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it usually, uh, you know, I usually see it in the fall fruiting, but it looks like it's also a spring fruiting mushroom too, so. This one's non-toxic, although I just never hear about people really eating them. So um, you could, in a pinch, eat this, but just like with all other mushrooms, cook it well, and you wanna try a little bit at a time to uh, make sure that your system isn't just uh, allergic or intolerant of them. But a Suillus mushroom always has this really tight yellow pore surface underneath the bottom of it, and this really, really thin margin. So the edge of the cap is called the margin and uh, in a bolete won't have this really thin skinny margin on here. So there you go, the Suillus lackii. So this stick is pretty cool right here. I've also talked about these in other foraging videos somewhat recently, but worth taking another look at. This is called the Alpine Jelly Cone or Gwipiniopsis alpina. And they actually look like little cap and stem mushrooms, but they're definitely gelatinous. So very jelly-like, but uh, Beautiful little mushrooms and they're growing all over this stick. They're always growing on a small stick, like less than one inch in diameter. You know, this one's about one inch, but I never find them on bigger sticks. They, they just love this size of a branch. So every little thing that falls in the forest out here has a purpose, has a place. So all these little sticks that get shed off by these Douglas fir as they do their natural pruning process when they fall to the ground. Um, these these mushrooms feed on them and they and they love to grow with them so the guipiniopsis alpina or the uh, alpine jelly cone a beautiful addition to the forest here in the spring in the northwest So this is an interesting mushroom to be finding in the spring. And I was finding these last fall, there was a foraging video, I think last October that I talked about these mushrooms, but they seem to fruit in the, uh, in the fall and in the spring. And it's a pretty handsome looking mushroom, pretty hardy. And you can see this deep maroon stipe, right? Really dark kind of purple stipe, but underneath it, you could tell that it's kind of yellow colored. And then it's got uh, this spongy surface underneath, but this one doesn't have that really thin raggedy margin like the uh, Suillus did. This one's got a pretty unique look and it looks a lot hardier and the cap, and the, uh, the cap is more centralized on the stipe here. Um, so the stem is right in the center of the cap rather than offset. And it actually looks like a red potato on top of the cap. This surprised me to catch my eye like this because this one is known as the uh, Xerocomelis uh, atropurpureus 
which is, uh, you know, it's like the Northwestern um, purple Zeller Bolete. We used to call it a Zeller's Bolete, but um, it's recently, somewhat recently been found that Zeller's Bolete, the Boletus Zellerii or Zero Camella Zellerii is, uh, is actually different than this um, Zero Camellus Atropurpureus, although this is an edible mushroom. And so some of the distinguishing features, this dark kind of purplish cap, and it's got this yellow pore surface underneath. It's got this really maroon stipe that you can tell is kind of yellow underneath the red fibers that are growing on it. Very colorful mushroom and a beautiful one and a little bit surprising to find in the spring here in the Northwest. So there's a couple of them here and I could take these home and slice them up and throw them in an omelet. Um, but I can see that this one has some, some bugginess, some worms going on in here. Uh, one thing about boletes, they get worms really quick, but I am surprised to see a bolete in the spring. This is kind of a first for me, so maybe you uh, you have found these this year, but um, kind of a cool one to find a suillus and a bolete growing in April in Washington State. So I'm gonna put this back, but uh, you could call this the Zellers if you want. It's just as edible, and uh, but this is the Zero Camellus Atropurpureus. So kind of a mouthful to say, and uh, potentially a good mouthful to eat. So we're gonna put that back and keep it moving. pick that guy out of there and uh yeah this this mushroom here is growing off this this old log right here uh this one is uh kind of an interesting one to find this type of year and a little bit more tricky to figure out what it is it's got this really kind of tough stem on it i think it's a little dried out and it's a little bit old but if i look here in the gills i can see a certain coloration that tips me off to the color of the spore print of this so this actually has kind of a dark sort of purplish looking spore all over those gills there. This is a really mature specimen. And so that would uh, indicate to me, because I know about spore colors, that this would fall in the genus Hyphaloma. So this is probably Hyphaloma fasciculari, or the uh, sulfur tuft. And usually you'll see these growing in big troops, but this one just happens to be growing alone and they love rotting wood. So they're often growing off of rotting wood. Um, they have a relative that's edible but this one here is considered toxic. Probably one of the more poisonous mushrooms here, native to the Pacific Northwest. And although this one is not gonna kill you, uh, could definitely put you on the toilet for a couple days, uh, make you vomit, and uh, just really doesn't agree with the human uh, digestive system. So um, Hyphaloma always have this purple brown kind of spore print, real dark spore print. And uh, you know, it's got like not bioluminescent, but uh, fluorescent gills. So at night, if you were to put a black light on this, it would really kind of look like it's glowing. Although this one's a little bit older. And in fact, this might not even be fasciculari, but it's definitely in the genus Hyphaloma. If there's any mycologists out there wanna leave in the comments what exactly species this is, but I would treat it like a Hyphaloma fasciculari or a sulfur tuft and just avoid uh, picking this one to eat. You know, it's okay to touch them but uh, I would avoid eating this one because it comes from a family of mushrooms that are known to give you a bellyache. However, I do like the Hyphaloma capnoides that's known as the smoky gill, and it grows in the fall, and uh, it, it's distinctly different than this, and it's a pretty obvious one uh, because of the gill color, but because of this, um, the age of this mushroom, I'm just, I wouldn't trust eating it, and especially because there's just one of them, and I'm sure it's in the genus Hyphaloma, so a good one to leave behind, but it's a wood decayer here. So some people might think these are honey mushrooms or something, but they're certainly not. Honey mushroom has a white spore print and this one's got a dark kind of purple spore print. So Hyphaloma fasciculari or the sulfur tuft. Let's keep going.
So here's another one that looks a bit like the Amanita pantheranoides. If you look at this, it's got the spots all over the cap, just like the other Amanitas, like Amanita muscaria or Amanita pantheranoides. It's got the white gills and it's gonna have white spores. It's also got this egg-like vulva that it came out of. Um, it's got kind of a collar around here and then you can see this, this veil, the partial veil that tore away from underneath this margin. And this has a very kind of orange apricot color and, and really, uh, you know, this, these veil remnants are kind of fused into the cap. So this one is another Amanita and it is a spring fruiter around here. This is called Amanita Africa. So this one should be uh, handled as if it is poisonous, just like um, the other Amanitas. Uh, I've never heard of anybody trying to use this for any purpose, uh, but it's a beautiful one here. It's got this apricot color and I think that's why it gets the name Amanita Africa. So beautiful little mushroom. Oh, and I broke the cap, but we're gonna leave that here, spread some spores. So there you go, Amanita Africa. Hey, so there's one more thing. Um, mushrooms will eat you when you die. So I got this shirt, I got hooked up by the Mushroom Marauder. So if you want one of these shirts and there's a whole bunch of other swag, he does carvings with Chlorocyborea. I've talked about that in a couple of my videos. It's the mycelium of the mushroom that turns the wood blue. He does some cool wood carvings with that stuff. There's all kinds of stickers and swag you could get at mushroommarauder.com. And if you put in the code WONDERLAND at checkout, you can get 20% discount. Just doing this to uh, hook up people in this mushroom community. And I just thought the shirt was super cool. So a big shout out to Adam McRae and uh, Mushroom Marauder. Here's some of the other stuff he hooked me up with. Some of these keychains, and there's all these cool stickers. This one's going on the truck for sure. Foraging Addict. Love this and that and just a little mushy. So again, mushroommarauder.com with the code WONDERLAND. All right, so there's an interesting look at some of the mushrooms growing out here in the spring and I'm glad that you uh, joined us for this episode and I hope you hit that notification bell and subscribe to the channel so you can see future videos. And I'm gonna be out here in the woods just constantly giving updates all year. So go on and get out there in the woods and try to forage some mushrooms, see if you can identify them yourself. Get yourself a good field guide. That'll help you to narrow down which mushrooms you find. And then in this day and age, the internet has just made it so awesome. But if you're on Facebook, join some of those identification groups in your area so that you can get an idea of what kind of mushrooms are growing around you. Thanks for joining us on Mushroom Wonderland and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care everyone, much love.